scleritis is a condition in which the blood vessels that are contained within the sclera, if you see the image on screen now, you can see the sclera has a dense network of blood vessels. If these blood vessels become inflamed, then a patient is said to have scleritis. Other associated parts of the eye may also have inflammation associated with a scleritis. The reason scleritis is of utmost importance in terms of diagnosing and investigating is because it could actually indicate a serious underlying systemic problem with an individual. Up to 50% of patients will have an underlying systemic cause for why their eye is red. So if you want to learn more about this, then please stay tuned. Scleritis can be divided into both anterior and posterior forms. This video will focus on the anterior type of scleritis, which involves the structures anterior to the extraocular muscles. The extraocular muscles are the muscles that move the eyes. Anterior scleritis can be diffuse, meaning it encompasses and involves a large area, or it can be nodular, meaning it's localized to a specific region of the eye. Scleritis can also be further subdivided into um, necrotizing and non-necrotizing forms. The necrotizing form simply means that tissue ultimately gets eaten through due to the inflammation. Due to this significant disease process, patients will be in acute pain and it is the most severe form of anterior scleritis. There's also another type of anterior scleritis called scleromalacia perforans in which there is significant disease. However, the eye is painless. In terms of why somebody can potentially present with scleritis, if 50% of patients have no underlying disease, it means the other 50% will. The most common of these underlying diseases is rheumatoid arthritis. It can also occur with other processes such as infection, it can occur after trauma, it can occur after surgery. Moreover, patients with autoimmune diseases are more likely to get an anterior scleritis. The diagnosis of anterior scleritis is usually a clinical one, meaning that it does not require any further investigations or imaging. However, the cause as to why it has happened will potentially require further investigations. On a clinical examination, sometimes it can be difficult to try and differentiate between an episcleritis and a scleritis. What can be done is using topical phenylephrine, and this usually needs to be 10%, um, but it can equally work well with 2.5% concentration. And what happens is if you install the phenylephrine and you review the patient's um, sclera after approximately half an hour or so, what you will notice is if the sclera becomes completely white, i.e. it blanches, then that implies that the episcleral vessels were in fact affected and it was more a diagnosis of episcleritis as opposed to scleritis. Whereas if after a period of time has elapsed, the sclera is still red, then that implies that you are dealing with a scleritis. Other things to also help you when you're trying to examine a patient are things such as pain, episcleritis. Patients will typically have mild discomfort and sometimes they can be asymptomatic where scleritis patients will describe a deep um, dull pain that usually wakes them up at night or keeps them awake at night. As mentioned, scleritis can be associated with other underlying systemic problems. So therefore, clues as to what could be going on could be, for example, if the patient has a saddle-shaped nose, which is shown on screen now, they may also describe coughing up blood, for example, having difficulties with their breathing. And this could all point to features of a condition called um, Wegener's granulomatosis. This has been recently renamed to granulomatosis with polyangitis. Another hallmark feature of scleritis is that patients can describe pain on eye movements. Importantly, clinically, a B-scan should be performed to rule out the possibility of posterior scleritis also being present. In order to try and get to the bottom of what is causing the patient's scleritis, they will need to go on to have blood tests to look for the things I mentioned earlier. The patient will need to be promptly started on anti-inflammatories to try and reduce the inflammation, and this could initially be with 
non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, and this could then be titrated up to things such as oral steroids. The steroid treatment is designed to reduce inflammation and prevent any further ongoing damage to the sclera itself or the associated structures in and around the eye. Patients with scleritis will be jointly managed by both the ophthalmologist and the rheumatologist. On the appropriate treatment, patients usually do well. Thank you so much for watching this video about anterior scleritis. In this video, I've discussed the different types of anterior scleritis that there are, how patients typically present with the condition, the signs that may be present, how to differentiate between an episcleritis and a scleritis, and the basic principles centered around investigations and management. If you've liked this video, please click the bell icon, click the like button, and kindly subscribe. Thank you very much. Till next time.